that's me again. Dr. Kenneth Nance. I, I'm sure that is slower for you. I, and that's it about life with us. We start to try to rush things, even the way we speak. Uh, we try to fit things into spaces. So here am I at the beginning of this podcast, rushing my name. Okay, nice. Oh, no, no, take your time. Dr. Kenneth Nance. And the TH is important. <laughs> well, anyway, that's a reality of how we fit within situ situations and environments and how we learn to work out our own selves. And we have been talking about generally, and I say generally here, looking before we leap. How do we anticipate behavior? How do we work out the emotions within an environment, any space, to ensure that there's balance and there's productivity and there's that cohesiveness uh, that brings about the re expected results. Uh, do remember that sometimes the expected results uh, change because sometimes as we go along in train, the outcomes are different and so we have to keep redefining our expectations. Today, I want to take us a little further into fit. As I said just now, the way I rushed my name did not fit your ears very well. And I suppose for my producers here, it did not even fit them. So it was important to repeat. And I want to talk about how do I fit into a space? How do I fit? And I want to know that people most times fit and then they say, take it or leave it. That's me, that's not you. That's how it is. But the is is okay. But with that is, there's always a uh ah -uh. <laughs> and a woe, you know, it's it's always an us sometimes more than a, a me. And so it is important for me to look at how I work that. And I want to firstly address the issue of how I was brought up. And I was brought up out of a family of origin perspective. Uh, what one may want to look at as the generations before or the ancestral context uh, with people coming up great 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 grandfather great grandfather you know those those greats coming up to grandfather and the father and it's important to know that they trained us and nurtured us within their own perspective of life decisions problem solving family concepts we today would now have to decide do we continue there do i want to continue doing the things that my granny did or my great granny did or my great grandfather did do i want to perpetuate that in this time and this season we are in 2022 at present time if you're viewing maybe next couple of years but there's the continuum of advancement within technology, within science. And so how do I work out a fit in 2022, having been nurtured by somebody who grew up in 1947 or 1960, even 1925, uh, I, I would have grown up with people, with my parents, that is, from the 1920s. And today, having been built in the 1950s, and now I have insurance throughout, how do I find myself fitting within this maze of difference? How do I now not say, that's how I used to do, that's what I am accustomed to doing, that is what I was taught. Yes, you were taught. Yes, I was taught, but can my taught thing be real today? Is it applicable? Is it functional? And I, I was listening to the political banter recently in my country about a politician talking about going back to the bicycle or using the coal pot. And I said to myself, the reality of that does bring to us a concept of of maybe financial equity that I could maybe not afford to at a particular time 
use a fridge or use a stove so I will have the cold pot or I might have an ice box but when I go out of my door and I'm faced with public how many cold pots am I going to have how many ice boxes will I see and so therefore I am now convinced therefore somewhere that this cannot be it cannot work because there is a fast movement of productivity within that context so here am I having to face a microwave oven a toaster oven a fryer a stove that has burners not just one burner but a stove that we have six and so that I have to realize that gladly my ancestors did well with their little cool pot, their stove, their wood fire. But today I have to refit and not condemn, but to understand that's how it had to be. So even though I grew up between 50s into my 80s with children and the 90s and introduced them to certain factors of life, Today, those factors have changed again. I, my, my, my grandchildren recently, I showed them a, a, a rotary phone and they asked me, what was that? They didn't know what a rotary phone was. But so, so me to say now, use this, it was like, they didn't even know what a digital phone looks, looks like. Uh, they haven't used that because phones are not something now that are, are very prevalent, even though they, the business people are still moting but the, it's now the mobile the cell phone the, the smallest child I've, I've seen a one-year-old child ac accurately using the phone by the air and, and, and talking nobody's done it but they know how to put that phone by there not yet too so that we have to learn that there is a need for refitting and understanding how we work this it's also important to look at the education there and now what i had in my book bag my slate did i say book bag yes i did do we have book bags anymore but what's if we do have a book bag there's nothing education in that book bag oh you may have a tablet and this is not medication this is a device that is technologically constructed to capture educational perspectives, teachings, philosophies, etc. You realize that if I talk about a slate and big line copy book and small line copy book, those things are there, but they are not applicable in terms of how we are and where we are going. So that the mind of today really has to work out at who they are and what they're doing. You know, it is also important to see that within a village context, how am I working? What is called village or what is even called community? I remember growing up with neighbors. <clears throat> Mr. So-and-so, the left or the right, and the children would come across and play, and my grandmother would do things like make tulip and sugar cake, those little sweets, and share, and we'd get food or mangoes or fruit. And there was that kind of sharing, and sometimes you hear a voice by the gate, a baker bread, you know, the neighbor, from, and the neighbor was not just the neighbor next door, but the neighbor, people in the community who all had that neighborly function. During the day, most women were home, homemakers, and so therefore there was a continuum of change and change of words and, and, and sharing and, and there was the meeting place and some people would meet and have a little coffee or tea and exchange recipes. Today, it's concrete. We all leave at six, we come back at five. We all shut our doors, ironproofed burglar proofed all kind of proof <laughs> you know, we, we are not open to that space anymore how do I think of asking my neighbor for salt across the fence that was a thing that you did years ago today no you can't think of it so I was speaking basically to people who are blessed in between let's say may I say 35 to, to 65 because we are still transitioning in terms of how we are working with our own children and our grandchildren. I'm trying to have a conversation with my grandchildren. But the better conversation for me to have, or the best, would be to use my fingers and say I'm talking. 
So the word talk is not about the mouth anymore. The word talk has to do with how fast I can use my fingers to text. And so therefore, I have to learn to define my mental capacity and my peace in order to how I work out this village. So the village now is not about people. The village now is about social media. How best I can get into that place. Having a tablet, having a, 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 a phone, having <laughs> those, these important devices like what is in my hand right now to make sure that I am functional and relevant and as i say this in my head you know before i would have notes or i may have paper written and i have a podium here no a podium sorry here no 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 it's on my phone and it's right there and i can scroll up and i could and it's in my hand and it's it's, it's what a little more comfortable less tedious but yet in my brain i'm saying where's my book oh, by the way i do have my little pad there <laughs> I do have my part with my writing in it, but yet I have to work with this. So when I'm looking to find people to talk to and to communicate and to have a line, especially after COVID-19, we could now have these parties virtually and that's where my village is. That's where my community is based in a technological concept. If I go on and look at my social impact, therefore, that's where it's like. So I take everything to the what the device i want to be an influencer rather to be than to be an intellectual so my much talking and my trying to find language with literatures and understand interpretation and application that becomes irrelevant when i could be a social influencer you call it how i take the pose come on come on come on cameraman take a pose here how i do it well you know how i oh i hear those scammers clicking yes am i I, I, I want to put that on social media to make sure that you see me and you know that I am a caraw. That's a big word. So I, I, am, I am fitted. Oh, how, well, I don't even know the words. You see, again, the language I have is no longer relevant out there. No. But so I have to find my people to uh, affect. How, how do I influence anymore? Socially. Who am I writing to if I write a book? Who's going to read my book when I write it? Am I writing for the now generation, the alpha plus people to read that? Millennials, yes, maybe, you know, baby boomers. And we are getting now low, bad eyesight, etc. We may not be able to, and everything now, it's the technology. You know, I want to write something, it's an email. Nobody's handwriting anymore. So that's, therefore I'm saying these things for you to see that all this is creating opportunity for emotional balance. Because when I can't write, when I can't talk, when I have to get a phone and I'm fiddling, I'm trying to do it, I can pick up a phone. I am still, you call me and you send me a text, the quicker thing for me is to call you back. Writing a text, I may write it once and after that, <clears throat> I call you because I have to recalibrate my brain <laughs> to, af to affect this new change and it's important for me to really understand that everything now is about balancing stress and that means it's about my behavior how am I behaving how am I behaving and what about me as a child yes can I behave as a child that my father would have expected? Who would have been 30 years old, older than I am, and yet in this day and age, he wondering himself, where are the, the letters that don't, they don't come in the mail anymore? No, they don't. They come by uh, email. And then I will be saying, they don't even come by email anymore. They come through WhatsApp. They come through <laughs> Instagram, those words. You know, so it's how do I work with that? So is, am I training my child? Are you training your children? Are you training yourself to work with your children? Who, whose demands now uh, are from their teachers? Uh, and they say they must have a phone. Uh, they must have a tablet. They must have these devices. It is not expedient that you may have a textbook because you can Google it off the phone and get the text. 
But and so that as a relative, how do I work with my cousins and aunts and uncles and those who have different interpretations of what I should be doing, when I should be doing it? How do I work that? How do I work as a student and understand that the way I am relating to information is quite different to how I did? I would have sat down in a room at a desk with a book and I will read, take notes. If I want more information, I go to a library. Now, as a student, I don't sit anywhere. I don't need to be, I can be anywhere. I have a phone, I have earphones, and I'm fine. <laughs> I could go to school with my phone. I could not go to school with my phone. The information is still coming. It's not something. So student life is very interesting. And I, I, I watch my grandchildren today as how they study. They have the phone in one hand, they read, but yet there's a book here and there's another device with a movie on. Or there's music. Wow. So you, you see, I have to learn how to behave. <laughs> Otherwise, I will always say, wow. As for the neighborhood, as I shared just now, where are they? If I, I remember growing up and my mother would want something and she leaned leave and say, hey, Miss, so, so, you have any sugar left? I, I'm looking for coconut. Do you want to have a coconut? I want to make some sweet bread. Now today, you can't see them unless you have a phone. And if you call, you may not get them because they're busy, they're not home. Or they might not answer when you want them. So you get into your car or you get out of your house, go and find the grocery store or go down to the market and get your coconut. So that, that neighborly intervention, that neighborly interaction, that neighborly interfacing, that where we can have a line and where we can talk about what's happening, that those things are not going on much anymore. We, we are in a different phase. And, and we, we, we talk about the whole issue of maintaining that kind of leverage uh, that brings in the measure of security. Now, tell you, if there was a strange person walking the road, you would automatically hear, hey, hey, who are you? Wake up, hey, hello, we don't, what's your name? Who are you looking for? No, no, everybody is, everybody is to themselves. And so that we have to see how do we make friends? How, how, how do we have, do we bring friends home anymore? How many people really have lives with friends at home? Or are we looking to go to the restaurant? Are we looking to see, I'll meet you at that point in time and, f and we go out. We are more going out than we're coming in. We are, more, we are more doing things outside of our home because at home is basically sleep. <laughs> Eat out. So I get up in the mornings, dress, I have breakfast on the fly, whether in, in, at the office or whether in the car, I have lunch. So I'm spending more money on food that I am spending on commodities for cooking. And, and so these are realities that I think it's real for me today and how do I work that? So that when I grow up, <laughs> yes, I'm growing up. When I grow up and be a professional, that's a saying. When I get big, what does professionalism mean? You, you know, you must want this. Dr. Les, what is, what are you really saying? I am wanting you today to take note that a lot of the way we behave or the, what encourages our behavior has to do with the interpretation of these factors that I'm sharing. How do I emotionally find balance to really engage people, children, neighbors, absence, difference? How do I do that and still have that smile? Because on one hand, mental health, those two words have become a household name. Everybody's concerned now about being stable. Everybody's concerned now about being right. And what we call in, in psychology, hardy, having that con con control. But it's important to me to know that if as a professional, there are different demands. Because most people now are, I notice I didn't say more, but most people are now working at home. Or shall I say, home. a lot of jobs are being created to work through from home. How do I work that? So what does the word employee mean anymore? <laughs> That's a whole 
new concept. Because we are going into so much business that everybody wants to have their own business for survival or for luxury or for leisure or for heritage. So I could be an employee not in a particular office space. I could be an employee in my own space. So when I'm asked for to be evaluated or when I'm evaluated, how am I really evaluated? I am only evaluated out of my production what I have produced in terms of substance, but I am not evaluated in terms of my character because there's no character to evaluate. Nobody's seen me, my camera's off. I'm not evaluated in terms of my intellectual capacity and my, uh, my camaraderie. No, those things are not there anymore. So that when it comes down to being a nation person, a citizen, who is that? We have to learn now that it all comes down from the home. Should I come up from the home to the citizen? And today, we are looking at a lot of <laughs> distraction, that distractions, I should say, plural, because that, that continues to create the, the, un, the uneasiness that encourages dysfunctional mental health. Dysfunctional. There's fear, paranoia. People are afraid to walk the road. People are afraid to open the doors. People are afraid to talk to you in the road because they don't know who is who. I might, somebody might slap me. I say something that I get cussed. I don't want it. I might get shot. I, there's violence. There is so much negativity that we are not in a place where we can really apply functionally. Not what even our ancestors, not even what our grandparents taught us. We have to look for a new frame. We have to devise a new frame in order to live peaceably with all men. So I trust that today you can find yourself much more confidently, much more pleasurably and enjoy what you do because you are learning how to fit with all these new things that keep emerging and understand that you are faced with a difference because what you have come from is not what you get in today. You have to learn how to make it work. So if you're looking forward, look carefully before you leap because in that leaping it could be disastrous because we don't know how to interpret newness to find that productivity so that we can be disciplined and be tolerant. So this is me signing off. Let's see if I do it better this day. Dr. Niles signing off today and saying yes, let's make it work. Let's engage in the new, let's recognize productivity is at hand. God bless you.